Hello, this is Faith of Faith in Books, and I'm going to review uh, An Old Fashioned Girl by Louisa May Alcott, which is part of the uh, Louisa May 2020 Read Along, um, or whatever it's called, a reading challenge. Um, and this is the second to the last book to read uh, next month. Uh, it, it all ends um, with uh, Under the Lilacs, I think, which is a book I have always wanted to read. Maybe I did read it. A long time ago I might find out that I did but I remember it a copy of it sitting on a shelf in the house where I grew up so I don't know why I wouldn't have read it but anyway that's the last one and the second to the last one the penultimate Louisa May Alcott book um, that I've read this year so it's been a really fun time I appreciate her and I also find her a little bit annoying sometimes. This was a typical Louisa May Alcott story. Um, it sort of uh, contrasted a, this country girl who's grown up um, sort of genteelly poor, but um, you know with very good morals. And she gets invited to visit um, an, a friend she's made through somebody else um, to stay at their house for a month or six weeks, something like that. And um, so her name is Polly Milton, and her friend is named, oh my gosh, I just finished reading the book, and I can't remember, uh, a fan, Fanny Shaw. And she meets Fanny Shaw's brother, Tom. He's 14, I think, at the time. And, uh, and then she has a little sister named Maud. Fanny does. These are all the Shaws, Fanny, Tom, and Maud. And um, Polly Milton is um, the country girl. That's the old-fashioned girl of the title. Anyway, she comes to stay with this family, and this family is much richer, and uh, the mother is kind of sickly and whiny. The father's distant and seems preoccupied with earning a living. And uh, it's uh, about her, you know, trying to fit in and be comfortable with this family while she's staying there. And she's very lively. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just typical heroine of Louise May Alcott. And you see the contrast. And um, Louise May Alcott's so good at doing the squabbling and the, um, the conversations and the humor uh, that goes on between these, these kids, these young kids. And then, um, so we finish up with her visit, and we've met all the people that we need pretty much for the whole book. And then... Then it's six years later. So she's come back, she's a young woman now, and she is, uh, Polly is going to be a piano teacher and live on her own and try to make enough money to help her brother Will go to college. And so, so we meet her again when she's, um, you know, uh, an adult, a young adult woman out on her own. So it's very lively, um, lots of stuff goes on. Um, it's quite quaint, and it, it, I, I actually took um, advantage of the uh, note feature on my Kindle, and I actually recorded some things because some, some stuff jumped out at me. Like at one point, she says, uh, one knows that persuasive influences are better than any amount of moralizing, which I think was a, she was taking a jab at herself because... Um, Louise May Alcott really likes to moralize. They're very Victorian in flavor, you know, the goody two-shoes girl, and, you know, all the all the different um, uh, obstacles she has to face, and, you know, she's worrying about um, envying rich girls that have pretty dresses and things like that. Um, I mean, it actually gets deeper than that, but, but I just thought that was funny that we have Polly say, who's, who's kind of a moralizer, saying that um, one knows that persuasive influences are better than any amount of moralizing. Um, and then um, there were a couple other things that were interesting, too. At one point, um, Polly has made friends with these artists, artist women, and it really reminded me of the Marble Fawn. It had these two women that were kind of doing the same thing as the two women in the Marble Fawn at Rome. And in fact, she even mentions, you know, that they wanted to go to Rome. And um, and then there was, uh, they had a friend there named Kate, who was obviously Louisa May Alcott herself. So it was, again, she's poking fun at herself. 
And she mentions Cranford in that scene because they start sucking on oranges if you've read Cranford. Uh, she makes a reference to that, so I thought that was funny. Um, and then does she make another reference to herself? I feel like she did. Oh yeah, at the end, she says, uh, you know, she sort of breaks the third wall and she goes, okay, so we're gonna wrap the story up now and I'm gonna make sure that all the couples that are supposed to get together will get together because, you know, in the past I got in big trouble for not doing that in another book. So obviously she was referring to Laurie and Joe from Little Women um, not winding up together. So I thought that was funny. Um, anyway, it was a sweet story. It was a lively story. It was very typical of Louisa May Alcott. Um, and I think I, I think I pretty much really enjoyed it. I, I don't think she did moralize quite as much or it was somehow a little bit more palatable. But it was very much in the same vein as a Rose in Bloom or Little Women. So um, anyway, so that's that's all I've got to say about that. Um, I'm looking forward to reading Under the Lilacs, and then I'm looking forward to exploring another writer um, next year, maybe, because it, it was kind of, it was a little bit hard to read the same author every month, even as one as delightful and light as um, Louise May Alcott. And I appreciate that I learned a lot more and have, full, you know, have um, a much fuller uh, knowledge of her work now. I really do appreciate that. But on the other hand, I did find her just a tad over the top, Victorian moralizing, you know, uh, that I did find that kind of a little bit grating. But it was it was really interesting to read her in conjunction with also reading uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne just to see this the really the same themes and the same kind of vibe and moral worldview um, really. Uh, that really stood out to me. Anyway, so that's it. I'm going to post this tomorrow a day early. You're supposed to post these Louise May Alcott things on the 29th. However, that's Saturday, and that's when I'm doing Brush Up Your Shakespeare. So I can't do too much on, on I can't do two on one day. So I'm just going to put this up a day early and then do my Brush Up Shakespeare on uh, Saturday. So, all right, I will talk to you later. Take care. Happy reading. Bye.